So you signed up for NaNoWriMo. You committed to write 50,000 words in a 30-day period. Pretty exciting. But what happens if you got to the end of the month and you didn't make it? You didn't get to 50,000 words. Whether you were 1,000 words shy, 10,000 words shy, whether you were 49,000 words shy, or maybe you just got a few words on the page, I'm going to argue that just signing up, just committing to NaNoWriMo is a step in the right direction. And that's what this episode of the Stark Reflections podcast is about. Welcome to the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. There has never been a better time for writers. More information, options, and opportunities are available to you. But navigating these requires insight. Join Mark Leslie Lefebvre as he draws upon more than a quarter century of experience as a writer, a bookseller, and a trusted book industry consultant to explore and reflect on the writing and publishing landscape to help you make informed choices on your writer journey. Hello, Reflectives, and welcome to episode 335 of the Stark Reflections podcast. This is your host, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about NaNoWriMo. I'm going to talk about my failing to complete NaNoWriMo. How many of you are in the same boat? And I know I said failure, and I know the title of this episode is So You Failed NaNoWriMo, but I'm maybe perhaps one of those the page is half full kind of writers, and and I'm going to argue that there's still some triumph, there's still some success, there's still some achievements that you and I made even if we didn't get 50,000 words written this month. And that's going to be the topic for this episode. But first, let's hear a word about this episode's sponsor. This episode is sponsored appropriately by The Relaxed Author by Joanna Penn and Mark Leslie Lefebvre. Yes, The Relaxed Author. Take the pressure off your art and enjoy the creative journey. Do you want to be a more relaxed author? There are plenty of books and tips on writing faster, learning more marketing tactics and strategies, trying to maximize your ranking, hitting the top of the charts, juicing the algorithms, and hacking different ad platforms. Well, these are all important things, which the authors themselves regularly write and talk about. It's also important to recognize that your author journey is a marathon and not a sprint. Joanna Penn and Mark Leslie Lefebvre have been in the business long enough to see authors burning out and leaving their writing life because they turned what they love into a hamster wheel of even more production and marketing tasks they hate. It doesn't have to be this way. This book is a collection of tips on how to be a more relaxed author and return to the love that brought you to writing in the first place. You can get The Relaxed Author in audio, in hardcover, in large print, in trade paperback, in ebook, virtually anywhere that books are sold. So check out The Relaxed Author because I know it's something I definitely need to reread. All right, so uh, appropriate ad read, of course, The Relaxed Author. And, and yeah, I, I needed to remind myself of that. But this is going to be a very short, well, not short, a uh, shorter solo episode because I'll be honest with you, I am overwhelmed uh, as I have been for the last forever, <laughs> for, for the last little while. Uh, with so many tasks, my Masters of Publishing uh, program, we, we, we had a week off for reading week, and then all that meant was that this week we had to do twice as much stuff. So there's stuff going on there. There's stuff going on uh, with the work I'm doing with draft to digital There's stuff going on with the publishing that I'm doing under Stark Publishing. There's so many things going on. And, and, and yeah, I didn't get several of the writing projects done. And, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this episode. I'm going to forego uh, a lot of the introductory stuff like recent comments, but I do uh, want to just say I am so excited, uh, speaking of Joanna Penn, 
I just got Writing the Shadow. I just got the special, beautiful hardcover limited edition signed by Joanna. And, and I know that's going to one of my awesome patrons, uh, one of the folks uh, who supports this podcast over at patreon.com. So, so that's going out in the mail. Uh, you know who you are. I'm trying to remember who won it. <laughs> I announced it in a previous episode, but that'll be going out the door in the next few days. But that's it for the introductory matter. I am hoping to get my head screwed back on straight in the next week or two so I can get back to some of the amazing interviews that I do have lined up. And I have I have almost a dozen interviews in the queue. And I know, you know, longtime listeners will know that, yeah, several times uh, in the last uh, couple months, I have resorted to having to do these really quick uh, solo episodes just because it's, it's too difficult for me to get all of the other tasks done. But Please uh, bear with me, and I do think this is an important topic. It's important for me, and I'm positive it's going to be important for so many of you. So let's get right into it uh, right after I play this bumper. So you didn't win NaNoWriMo. Okay, so it's December 1st, and you just finished NaNoWriMo. Or at least you finished the month of November. I mean, we have no choice. Uh, if, if we're still alive, if we're still breathing, we finished the month of November. Yay! <laughs> but everywhere around you, you're looking at fellow authors, you're looking at friends, and they're all posting on social media that they made it, they did it. They wrote 50,000 words in a single month. And you're happy for them. Of course you are. But you didn't quite make it yourself. So what do you do? Do you hang your head in shame and despair? That's not what I'm doing. And and I'm a writer who failed NaNoWriMo 2023. Now, I am recording this on November 30th, 2023, knowing very well uh, my NaNoWriMo stats are sitting at about uh, 15,633 words for this year's project, and they've been sitting at that number oh, for the last two weeks. It is exceptionally clear that I'm not going to make it. It's as simple as that. I'm not going to hit that 50,000 word goal. I mean, I guess I could stay up all night and try to get it done, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to hit that goal. And, and this isn't the first time that I haven't made my NaNoWriMo goal. Why do I keep torturing myself like that? I'm hoping. I'm talking about this because what I'm hoping, and what I hope you do, if you're in a similar boat as mine, is to not think of that lack of hitting the NaNoWriMo goal as a failure. I'd rather we take a look at what we accomplished. And we also look at what we maybe learned from this experience. So let's explore that, shall we? First, let's go back to the goal. Now, the whole idea of NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, is to write 50,000 words in the space of 30 days. During one of the busiest months of the year, well, particularly if you think at it from the uh, American or U.S. perspective, uh, because that's you know, during American Thanksgiving, that's when the holiday season kicks off in the month of November. And and November is one of the shorter months of the year, you know, 30 days. The idea is that if you can do it in November, you can do it at any time of the year. It's meant to be motivational. And it is a fantastic experience. Because a lot of what we do as writers is solo. It's individual. It's you in front of your typewriter, your laptop, your pad of paper with pen in hand, or, or however it is that you write. But most often, you're doing it solo. You're doing it completely on your own. And that experience can be very isolating. And one of the wonderful things about NaNoWriMo is there's this huge community of authors from around the world, regardless of their experience as writers. If it's the first book they've wanted to write, or if it's the hundredth book they've written, they're all in the same boat. And all have a common deadline. We're all going to sit down, butt in chair, fingers on keyboard, or however it is that you prefer to write, and we're going to get 
50,000 words out, which works out to be about 1,667 words per day. If you can do that daily word count, or some sort of equivalent, however that works for you, if it's a weekly or every few days, however it is, but if you can get that count done, you can make it happen. You can fill those empty pages with 50,000 fresh words. And NaNoWriMo.org has some great tools available online where you can do the tracking and you can see how you're doing compared to where you should be for the month. You post your project and you can join local groups and territorial branches. There are write-ins that are managed locally, held at local cafes and libraries all over the place. Motivational tips are provided both by NaNoWriMo, but also other folks who are just there to help support you along the way. Kindred spirits, you might say. That sense of community and that mutual support and that idea of we're all in this together is, is fantastic. When we think about how isolated we are as writers, that we can do something like this and feel part of a larger community and the act of writing itself, that can be quite powerful. But what if, like me, you didn't quite reach your goal? I didn't even come close to my goal. Well, I want to take a look at this, and I want to celebrate. I want you to celebrate. I want to celebrate. Perhaps you might say that I'm one of those, the pages have full type of writers. That just might be. But I think it's important to analyze the good that can come from the experience itself, the overall experience, whether you quote unquote win or quote unquote fail. Here are a few of the reasons why I think it's important to celebrate. The very first thing to celebrate is that you committed to doing something. You may not have actually made it. You may not have finished it, but you committed to something. You took it seriously enough that you signed up publicly to say, I'm going to get this done. Yeah, okay, you didn't get it done. But that first step is the commitment. And that's an important first step for writers. Such a critical first step. Whether it's, again, your first book or whether it's the hundredth book that you've written, committing to getting it done is important. The act of writing down those goals, even if it's a digital writing down that you've done online on nanorimo.org, it's one of the most important first steps for a writer. And first steps are hard. So kudos to you on taking that step. You all know what they say about a journey of a thousand miles. It doesn't start until that first step but it actually starts even before that first step in your mind, in the mindset. And that's a big hurdle to get over. Now, the second thing, even if you only sat down one single day in those 30 days of November and, and cranked out far less than the 1,667 daily word goal, even if you only wrote one sentence, if you merely wrote a word or two, or a title only on paper. You're ahead. <laughs> it's a small measure. But you're actually ahead of where you were before when it was just an idea that you wanted to do this. A, just an idea that you wanted to write. Just an idea that you wanted to get a book out there. Yeah, maybe it's only a title. Maybe it's only a word or two. But you still took that step. And that step is an important measure no matter how small that is. I know it seems a little patronizing to me to say, yeah, great, you're three words ahead because you wrote three words this month. But, but the reality is, and I go back to that classic book for writers, Anne Lamott's Bird by Bird, is that we get there word by word. We get there little by little in small steps over time. Let me go back to my very first experience of signing up for NaNoWriMo in 2006. Not only did I sign up to write uh, 50,000 words in 2006, but I also signed up as part of a popular writer's podcast at the time to be a guest on what was a reality show style a series of episodes for that show, where the host of the show was going to follow me along as I wrote this book. 
I not only committed to NaNoWriMo, but I committed to be her guest and kind of reveal the process of me doing this. And I thought, I fully thought I was going to do it because, wow, that's public shaming. Not just an online place where people could see that I failed, but I was going to be interviewed about that if I failed. And I did fail. I mean, I never did it. And I should stop using the word failure, of course, but I just want to emphasize how I'm taking what could be that word failure and I'm leveraging it in that step-by-step, word-by-word way. So I never did it. I never finished the book during that period, you know, that November, nor during the, the total of 13 episodes of the podcast that went on for more than a year after that fateful November, as the host kept checking back up with me to see how I was doing. Over those episodes, if you listen to them, you can hear that I became really good at making up excuses as to why I never finished the book. (laughs) I had every excuse in the book. And when you think about it, it, it's kind of great for leveraging the writer's imagination, (laughs) but I digress. (laughs) Now, I got about 30,000 words done on the project during that time period. Uh, Maybe I got about 20,000 words done during that November, and then maybe another 10,000 or so words over the next several months. And that book, which was called A Canadian Werewolf in New York, it ultimately took me almost 10 years to write. When I finished the first draft in 2014, I had roughly 80,000 words. And then it went through the editorial process, the rewrites with my editor, and, and the book was published in 2016. Ten years after I committed to sit down to get it done that one month, all those years ago. But you see, it never would have been published in 2016 if I hadn't committed to doing it, regardless of how long it took me or how many tangents I took along the way. This is a reminder to you that it's not just about looking at your sales dashboard online today and seeing how you're doing today or this hour. It's not about sitting down and saying, what can I get done today? What can I get done this week, this month? It's what can you get done with a long-term commitment? Even if along the way you hit bumps and things that come up that are going to slow you down, distract you, send you off in different directions, and distract you ultimately from the writing. The key is remembering that this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. What are those long-term goals? And how committed are you to yourself and to getting this done, no matter how long it takes, no matter how many distractions come along the way? Word by word, day by day, month by month, year by year, even if there is no actual visible or measurable productivity within that time period. Because oftentimes as writers, we're processing things in our minds that do not make it to the printed page. Now here are a few more stats from me. Now I've signed up for NaNoWriMo about 10 times and three of those 10 times I've not succeeded in writing 50,000 words. Although when I look back at those projects, admittedly for every single case, with, with the exception of the November 2023 NaNoWriMo project that I still haven't finished, I ended up later finishing and going on to publish those other projects. Different time periods. One of them, you know, you saw 10 years later. Other ones, maybe not so much or not so long, uh, perhaps because of things I've learned along the way. It's important not just to commit to something, but it's also important to continue to work at something and to improve it. And I think it's really important when you look at my track record to remember that I was on a streak for a number of years. Every year I committed to writing 50,000 words and I wrote those 50,000 words and I was celebrating and it was so exciting. And then I got to a year where I didn't do it. It almost feels like I've broken the habit, I've broken the pattern, I've fallen off the wagon, however you want to describe it. And, and then comes the feeling like the chain is broken and I'm never going to finish another project again. That can happen. And I know that feeling. It can be overwhelming. But throughout our career as writers, we can have successful books and unsuccessful books. 
We can have great achievements, great writing days, and not so great writing days, and horrible days along the way. We can have a series of flops, but I would argue that every single time that you commit to a project that you want to write, that you commit to putting words on paper, every single time you write something, anything, in any form, in any way or shape, you're honing your craft, you're learning, you're getting better by continuing to practice. And you're not just honing your craft and your ability to write and become better at writing and, and fine tuning and making that writing as good as you can be, but you're also honing that commitment to getting the work done. And that works the same way. But it's not just that. Every time you try something and you don't hit those goals, you've learned something new about yourself, about what didn't work. What did you try that didn't work? What didn't you try that you might want to try next time? What advice did you follow that just didn't fit within the way that you get things done? There's no one way of doing it. Even as you listen to this and you hear me describe things that may work for me, they may not work for you. I don't want to prescribe that you should write every single day because the reality is it's not everyone's going to be able to do that. I can't do that. What I think is really important is, is to look at the overall goal that you have of what it is you want to do, what it is you want to accomplish, and then step back and take some time. Do some calculations, do some measuring, do some planning, do some dreaming as to what it may take to get you to that goal in a way that works best for you with your own unique timelines, your own unique planning, your own unique processes. Most of the years in NaNoWriMo when I finished a project, I often start off really strong and I'm way ahead of the gate. You know, 50,000 to 10,000 words ahead of where I need to be. It's like I'm, I'm buffering or I'm banking that time because I know I'm going to slip. Because stuff usually happens in the middle of the month and I begin to falter miserably. And it's usually not until the last few days of November that I just crank those words out like a machine. And I'll be honest with you. Whether it's uh, traditional publishing contracts I've signed, as, as well as editors that I've hired and scheduled, I do pretty much the same thing. I'm, I'm usually strung out of the gate. I suffer and struggle and get diverted somewhere in the middle, and then I come back at the last minute to pull it off at the very last procrastinating second. That's the way I work. That's what I've learned over the years of NaNoWriMo. I've tried so many times to change it, but I'm not able to change that about myself. It just seems to be the way that I work. I am apparently motivated by that stress. I need that anxiety of the deadline to motivate me to get it done. And, and obviously, I don't always get it done. But that's what I've learned about myself. And that's how I've learned the way that it works for me. The way that it works for you it's going to be entirely up to you, up to your preferences, your nuances, the default ways that you prefer to work. And an additional thing I will say related to that is I don't believe that you have to suffer for your art. I enjoy writing. I actually like writing. I really do. I enjoy the process. I love the way that I feel when I'm writing. I, I feel so much better when I'm writing. Writing has a similar effect on me as, as taking a walk through the woods on a beautiful summer day. I finished the first draft of a, a new 5,000 word short story yesterday on an idea that had hit me in the late summer. Yeah, I know, during NaNoWriMo I abandoned the NaNoWriMo project and I worked on something else because it felt good to get that story done. I did also have a deadline because I was writing it to submit it to a particular market. But when I wrote the final words, I breathed a wonderful contented sigh and I felt a warmth of satisfaction. I did it. I nailed it. I, I expressed the thing I was looking to express in this horror story. 
And then this morning, early when I got up, be, before I started my regular work day, I went through and I did a rewrite and an edit. And I cut some things and tweaked some other things in the story. And I know it still needs a little bit more work, but the process worked for me. I got the story done. I got it cleaned up. I got it out the door. But I enjoyed the actual act of writing. And I write the stories that I want to share, the stories that I'm compelled to write, not based on any specific market, but because it's a story I'm enjoying creating. I write the stories that are important to me. So even if they never sell or if it's something I've published independently and it doesn't move a lot of copies, I've still won because I won during the process of creating it. The process of writing itself was an act of triumph, of winning. I get something intrinsically out of the very process itself. And that's important to me. Remember, not everyone's goal as a writer about being a New York Times bestseller or earning a full-time income from writing. Sometimes you need to write because that's who you are. So in conclusion, I want to remind you that I did not succeed or finish the 50,000 words that I committed to write in November 2023. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to succeed as a writer. It doesn't mean that I'm going to see that as a loss or as a failure. I'm going to see the work that I did do this month as a step forward, as one more additional step forward for me as a writer in my long-term growth. I'm going to see every single thing that I did related to getting those words on paper, which was the commitment and the outlining and the planning and all of those things that go into making a book what it is. I'm going to look at all of those things as little successes along the way, despite the bumps in the road. We spend too much time focusing on the bumps. We spend too much time counting the failures and the things we didn't get right or we didn't finish and not enough time enjoying the smooth parts of the road, enjoying the fact that we actually did get a little something done, and they're that much closer to the end goal, and perhaps a little better for those bumps and those stumbles, and the things that we learned as we stumbled along the way. Like I said, day by day, word by word. Completing a journey of 1,000 miles begins not just with that single physical step, but the internal step that is first taken when you commit to making that journey. And the act of completing a novel does require words, a huge number of them, of course. But similarly, it all begins with the commitment, with setting out that goal, that vision, that dream of getting that book done. So if you set that goal, regardless of where on the trail you are, celebrate with me, please, that you did take that daring, first, and most important, most critical step. Well, that's it for this episode of the Stark Reflections podcast. I hope you found it a valuable reflection. If you one NaNoWriMo, if you got 50,000 words done, then a huge and hearty congratulations to you. You committed, you got it done. If, like me, you signed up for NaNoWriMo and you didn't get to the 50,000 words, I still congratulate you. I still think you committed to it. That is such an important aspect of the journey as well. Let's not discount that. Thanks again for listening to this podcast. If you enjoy the podcast, please share it with someone that you think would find value in it. Of course, you can always leave a review on the podcatcher of your choice. And so, until next episode, this is Mark Leslie Lefebvre wishing you great writing and good stark reflections. Thank you for listening to the Stark Reflections podcast. You can find show notes for each episode at starkreflections.ca. The music for this podcast, Laser Groove, was composed and produced by Kevin McLeod. Check out more of Kevin's great music at incomtech.com.